what this is about is for the kids. People want to be a part of something successful, and it is successful, and it's because of the people it's successful. If you have an active community program, people want to be involved. It's the community's fields. It's, 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 there's a sense of uh, pride and ownership in these fields. There's no limit to what can be accomplished when no one cares who gets the credit. We started out as sort of an offshoot of what I'd call our brother or sister league, Devon Stratford. There was really no home for the league. The main goal was pretty much to have our people play in one spot, make the fields really nice, something we could control, and have all the kids playing in one spot. The league had access to this property through a long-term lease, but it was basically a trash-strewn kind of dump. And everybody thought it was wonderful, but no one knew what to do with it. We had to clear probably 200 bottle cans we found, washing machines, refrigerators. Our goals starting out were literally to carve these three fields, the first three fields. And even though we had plans for beyond the wetlands, we, we were realistic enough to know that to try and do it all at one time was going to be impossible. We thought if we could get those three done, uh, that would be a great start. We would also get a read from the community and the league members as to how well it was received. And, and, and going forward, maybe we would eventually build the other fields and, and maybe build buildings. That was it. We started moving stones and cutting bushes down and people would say, what was going on? And it was the end of soccer season and people just start pulling up and kids getting out of the car and adults start getting out of the car and they start helping. And the next day we had about 30 people there. By Sunday afternoon we had about 60. In the meantime, we wrote an article saying that we're breaking ground for a complex. It started getting publicity and sort of started taking on a life of its own. It was amazing how many times the two different township police department came down and said to us in a very nice way, fellas, we love what you're doing here, but you're going to have to stop working because the permits aren't complete, you know, to keep this field going. All we knew is we had good weather, you know, and we needed to get this done. It's much easier to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. And that was the way we kind of, you know, ran this whole thing. June 30th, we decided to open up the fields with one game, and it was a challenger league. We played there in the first game, and we had the Philly for that to come out and throw the first ball. The vision that somebody had 23, 24 years ago to say that empty lot, it would be the greatest place to build fields and then to, to make it happen. You know, I mean, guys were out here in bobcats and, and, and on, you know, backhoes and doing, they didn't, these guys are all, you know, office guys and they're out here in backhoes building these fields. It's just, the, the vision they had is, it's, it's really hard to describe. I actually was getting lots of calls to do work in business and I was ignoring them because I was wrapped up in donating my time to the Little League fields because as I said, once we got into it, it was like you couldn't walk away, you know, until you saw it, it get finished. We really started out with no money at all. We were looking at, we thought, maybe a half million dollar project and that was us doing it and it cost probably well over a million dollars and we did all the work ourselves. What I like the most about what we've done with this complex and with this league in general is it's more than baseball, softball, t-ball, and the challenger program. It's really a way for a lot of adults and kids to give back to the community, from collections for troops overseas, to Phil Abundance, to Challenger Day. There's just a lot of philanthropic things that get done here. It's more than just a field. People understand that now. It's more than just a field. It's a place where things can happen. It's Little League Baseball, a great facility that everybody cares about. You know, it's awesome. I never envisioned this coming to what it is now. There's just something great about being here. It's, it's just like Americana. We love Berwyn Paley because they have the most fantastic coaches. They have a great group of parents and volunteers and they all work together in such a great way to make it fantastic for the kids. This complex wouldn't be the way it is if it wasn't for people just civic minded and just wanting to get things done. The driving force that kept us going was you don't start something you're not going to finish. I, I guess after 20 years and seeing what's been done at the league and what we've accomplished and how this has grown, the only way I can say thank you is by saying, look what you've done. 
I, I still have trouble believing that a little effort that got this thing rolling has resulted in this complex, which I even hear about it from people in other communities. You know, when you look to the future, basically, it's, it's not going to be the government, it's not going to be township, state government, anybody federal government is going to support it. It's going to be the local people, the people who we say own the fields. It's their fields. They have to keep it going. Every railroad tie that gets laid, every base that gets installed, every weed that gets pulled is all done by volunteers. We took a community ISO, we made it a community landmark. And that's really what it is now. The dreams come true. We can make that place for you, we did. I, I like it. I, I, it's really fun. Congratulations, B-Pal. 20 years of creating dreams.